Today on How It's Made Dream Cars, the BMW i8, a plug-in hybrid that drives like a supercar. The BMW headquarters, known as the four-cylinder, has been a landmark of the Munich skyline since its construction in the 1970s. The bold architecture of the building embodies the company's emphasis on innovation and efficiency. The building houses a multifunctional exhibition space called the BMW Velp. It's where visitors can get a first-hand look at BMW's latest products like the i8. Most electric vehicles are just gas-powered cars retrofitted with batteries and electric motors. The slogan for BMW's i-Series is Born Electric because these cars are built for electrified drivetrains. With gall-wing doors and the ability to accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 4.4 seconds, the BMW i8 looks and performs like a high-end sports car. The BMW i8 achieves its astounding fuel economy thanks to a powertrain that combines a highly efficient three-cylinder gas-powered engine with a starter generator and electric motor. The starter generator works with the twin-power turbo engine to drive the rear wheels. BMW calls this system E-Drive. The powertrain can crank out 357 horsepower. BMW chose to develop the entire powertrain in-house for the i8. An electric motor consists of an interior housing, stator, and a rotor. The stator is fitted with copper windings placed in a series of phases around the diameter. A device called a coil winding and inserting machine winds 12 coils of copper at a time for a total of 24 coils. Each motor gets over a mile of wound copper. To maximize quality and performance, the wires must be as close to each other as possible. A robot transfers the stator to a station where the copper windings will be installed. BMW is able to make their motor unusually small, thanks to a specially designed winding configuration. This saves space while helping the car maintain a low curb weight. The copper in an electric motor must be wound as compactly as possible. To ensure this, Manufacturers use a highly specialized sewing machine to bind the wires tightly together with 45 feet of cord. BMW's goal is to make every aspect of the i8 as efficient as possible. Thanks to the plug-in hybrid system, the car can travel up to 23 miles on electric power alone. A forming machine uses clamping jaws to manipulate the top of the stator into the correct shape. This helps make the copper coils, insulating paper, and binding cord as tight as possible. Before the stator reaches this station, workers have already inserted each bundle of wires into a color-coded sleeve. Each of the three colors, red, black, and white, identify a different set or phase of the copper coils in the motor. Next, the stators are heated to 329 degrees. Then a robot lowers them into a vat of resin. It's very important that the components of the stator remain as rigid as possible.
Coating the stator in resin helps hold everything in place, maximizing the motor's efficiency. The motor has to be as efficient and powerful as possible to boost the three-cylinder engine and give the vehicle the power output of a supercar. Next, a team of robots build the rotors. They are composed of six discs. Each disc has 12 small magnets and 12 large ones. The completed rotor will have a total of 144 magnets. The robots offset the magnets as they insert them into the discs, creating a seamless transition between magnetic fields. This is so the motor will run smoothly. Once the robots have aligned the discs and joined them together, they are heated to 150 degrees in an oven. Heating the discs expands the central bore, making it easier to insert the rotor shaft. The rotor shaft has been cooled with liquid nitrogen to negative 190 degrees. The stator, rotor, and the inner and outer housing come together to form the motor. BMW calls this the E-Machine. A technician works with a robot to install the power electronics on the finished E-Machine. This work is carried out at four different assembly stations. The stations are designed according to BMW's slogan, Today for Tomorrow. Because of Germany's aging population and diminishing pool of skilled laborers, BMW has begun to create stations that can accommodate workers of older ages. The workstation is ergonomically custom tailored to each and every worker. A technician can adjust the robot to his or her individual working height or alter its position while working on the bottom or sides of the e-machine. BMW has created a special structure for their i-series called Life Drive. BMW claims this is the first vehicle architecture designed specifically for electric cars. <laughs> Assembly of the i8 takes place in Leipzig, Germany. BMW has 30 production facilities spread throughout 14 countries. The Leipzig plant specializes in building the company's lightweight cars that have alternative drive systems. True to its innovative focus, the plant has four wind turbines that produce a total power output of 10 megawatts. That's more than enough power to produce the company's electric cars. Here, technicians are putting together the rear drivetrain unit. They start by lowering the three-cylinder engine onto a purpose-built aluminum frame. Built at BMW's Hams Hall plant in the UK, the engine features the company's proprietary twin-power turbo technology. The engine is capable of producing 231 horsepower. Next, the workers install the car's rear braking and suspension system. The rear chassis technology includes a five-link rear axle with aluminum components engineered for optimal weight and strength. This, along with the double wishbone axle in the front, allows the i8 suspension to provide an extremely smooth ride. To complete the rear drive unit, technicians install a sound absorber. BMW's assembly of the i8 features parallel steps along a single assembly line. One team builds the rear drive unit, while the other team focuses on the front and passenger modules. A portion of the car's drive modules are made of aluminum. This helps reduce the i8's overall weight. The electric motor is directly connected to the power electronics, cutting down on wiring and weight even further. 
At this station, workers finish assembling the front axle with the car's electric motor. The electric motor develops power as the car accelerates. This motor is specially designed for the I-Series. It features optimized arrangement and dimensions of the torque producing components. This powerhouse generates something called reluctance torque, which allows it to continue churning out torque at high revs. No electric vehicle is complete without the all-important battery. The i8's high-voltage lithium-ion pack runs down the center of the car. It has a gross capacity of 5.2 kilowatt-hours and direct refrigerant cooling. The highly specialized packaging and assembly of the battery requires more than 20 robots and 400 assembly steps at the BMW plant in Dingolfing, Germany. The rear drive unit arrives with its three-cylinder engine. The drive unit features precision direct injection, turbocharging, and variable valve lift control. It has the highest output of any engine produced by the BMW Group. Workers assemble the fan rotor, water cooler, and climate condenser of the cooler unit. They connect all the remaining cables and feeds. This finishes the assembly of the drivetrain module. Here we see the completed drive element of the life drive architecture. With an intelligent energy management system, the IH drivetrain can produce a remarkable blend of power and efficiency. All of the drive components are securely housed in the lower section of the I-8. So there's no transmission tunnel running through the center of the car. This leaves more room for the passengers up above in an area that BMW likes to call the life module. BMW calls the passenger area of the car the life module. It's made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic or CFRP. This material is 50% lighter than steel and 30% lighter than aluminum. Technicians move the CFRP life modules forward on the production line to prepare them for installing the wiring harness and dashboard. The cockpit of the I-8 has a multifunction display that can be tailored to the customer's specifications. The instrument panel display changes depending on the driving mode, featuring three-dimensional graphics and dynamic range display. It even has graphics that help the driver with charging the car's battery. A worker installs the brains of the passenger compartment, the body domain control unit. There's a lot to keep track of in the I-8, from the heated seats and mirrors to the rear view camera. The airbag control unit is hidden inside the center console. The BMW i8 comes with front, side, and head curtain airbags, as well as inertia reel seat belts with belt force limiters and ISOFIX child seat attachment points. Workers install the windshield. Robots have already prepared it with a defined bond seam. The i8 is the first production car to feature chemically hardened glass. It's a product mostly seen on smartphones. Acoustic sheeting sandwiched between two layers of ultra-thin hardened glass results in a material that's 50% lighter than conventional laminated glass. Technicians attach the front section of the life module with just eight screws and adhesive bonding. The life module includes a crash-activated aluminum structure that distributes the force of impact. This contributes to the I-8's excellent safety rating. The carbon fiber reinforced plastic of the passenger cell plays an important role in the car's overall safety rating as well. 
The outer skin of the gall wing doors is made of aluminum, and the inner structure consists of CFRP. BMW was able to design very large door openings because of the remarkable strength of the CFRP. CFRP has a lattice pattern. Technicians can work it almost like a textile before it's injected with resin. With careful positioning of the fiber, they can create an incredibly lightweight material that's as durable as steel. Technicians now raise the life cell in order to install sound and thermal insulation materials. Sound is an important factor in the I-8. BMW chose specific building materials for their lightweight and sound absorbing properties. The car is already quiet thanks to its electric motor. It can power the car in a nearly soundless all electric mode. The passenger cell is ready to meet its drivetrain. Technicians bring the two main elements of the car together to unite them into a single car. They bolt the two modules together with just 22 screws. The battery is placed beneath the passenger cell, giving the I-8 an extremely low center of gravity. This, together with the car's carefully calculated 50-50 weight distribution, contributes to a precision driving experience. The fact that you can plug the I-8 into a conventional wall socket to charge up its battery makes it a truly unique car. One that balances environmental concerns with the need for speed. In addition to all its cutting-edge innovations, the i8 is still a BMW. Its interior upholstery, exterior paneling, and wheels evoke the company's signature look. The motto of the i-series is intelligent, lightweight design. The bulk of the i8's exterior paneling is made of molded thermoplastic, an extremely lightweight, rust-free material. the hood and outer skin of the doors are made of aluminum. The I-8 achieves an impressive drag coefficient of 0.26, thanks to features like an air flap control system, a sealed underbody, contoured side skirts, and air ducts between the rear lights and roof frame. The I-8 comes standard with 20-inch forged aluminum wheels. But customers can choose from a variety of options, including mixed sizes for the front and rear. The tires have been optimized for aerodynamic efficiency. Their low rolling resistance means the car needs less energy to move. Once the wheel installer has finished, a second technician scans a barcode on the wheel to record that this task has been completed. And with that, the car slowly touches the ground for the first time. With the help of a hoist, workers lower the hood in place. The hood features the V-shaped beginning of the i 8 signature black belt. This belt extends back over the roof to the rear section of the car. This BMW i8 is finally ready to roll. A worker tries out the steering and drives the car to the final testing stations, where technicians check that the car meets all the required parameters. In true sports car style, the driver and passenger sit low in the I-8 seats. Exposed carbon fiber around the open door frame is a reminder of the car's lightweight construction. The center console houses the gear selector, iDrive operating system controller, start-stop button, 
and the driving experience control switch. In addition to the i8's high voltage lithium ion battery, it also has a 12 volt battery found in conventional cars. It's time to charge it up. The driver uses a BMW designed option called a wall box. This device can charge an empty battery to 80% of its capacity in less than two hours. BMW offers a package called 360 degrees electric that includes wall box installation and maintenance. The package also includes bespoke mobility services that links the owner's digital devices to their car. This allows for data transfer between car and driver, making it possible to perform functions like remote battery charging. For the upholstery, they use olive leaf extract to tan the leather. This method creates none of the environmentally damaging waste that conventional tanning methods do. This is just one more example of BMW's objective of creating a truly eco-conscious vehicle. The Sustainable Supercar. Today on How It's Made Dream Cars, a supercar that's inspired by multiple Le Mans winning race cars, the Audi R8. Audi's quintessential two-seater is the four-wheel drive R8 Coupe, built in Germany. The heart of the company known as Audi began in 1899, when engineer August Horsch introduced his first car brand, Horsch. At the time, the main competitors were Mercedes and Benz. In 1909, after disputes with his business partners, Horsch left the company he founded to start Audi. A year later, the first models of new cars under the Audi name were produced and immediately attracted people's attention. But in the 1920s, car sales were down in Germany and strong competition from abroad forced the German car industry into financial crisis. In 1932, in order to survive the crisis, Audi grew by merging with car makers Horsch, DKW and Wanderer to form Auto Union. This union was the inspiration behind the symbolic overlapping four rings, now known as the iconic Audi logo. The R8 uses a lightweight aluminium chassis and body. Fitted with a V10 engine, it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds. Up to 2013, Audi have won 12 out of the last 14 Le Mans 24-hour races. And it's that race history that's behind the R8. The core of this car is based on a space frame chassis and monocoque design. Interlocking struts form the chassis pattern with few interior supports, while the chassis, engine and suspension are integrated into the body. Weighing 210 kilograms, the space frame is comprised of 22% aluminium plating, 70% of extruded aluminium profiles, and 8% of an aluminium-based vacuum pressure casting. Built in the newly renovated factory at the manufacturer's aluminium site, the space frame chassis is assembled by first placing the structural struts into high-pressure vices called clamping fixtures. These jigs lock the chassis pieces into place, ready for the next stage. The frame parts are welded together using torches that heat up to 900 degrees Celsius. Aluminium burns more rapidly than steel, so the work has to be done quickly. Once the welding is complete, the frame section is moved using a hoist to the next workstation. The car's chassis consists of three major sections, the central floor, the rear end and the front end. An overhead conveyor delivers the chassis sections to another workstation where the large underbody parts are lowered to be welded. 
The frame pieces are positioned in the clamping fixtures. These hold the chassis parts into their finished positions, creating the ultra-lightweight aluminium undercarriage. Then every join on the chassis is meticulously welded. Once the welded joints cool, the chassis is released. An overhead transfer belt then lifts the frame to another workstation. One of the very few robotic operations in the body shop is the insertion of flow drill screws into the car's floor and cabin substructure walls. A fastening robot spins the self-tapping screws at high speed, where they flash melt into the aluminium. This creates an elongated threaded shank on the back of the aluminium sheet, which adds to the pull strength. Self-tapping screws drill their own holes when they're screwed into materials like wood, plastic or metal. The floor is reinforced by custom lightweight tailored aluminium blanks. The thickness of the panels varies based on their design and function. It takes 308 automatically placed self-tapping screws to join the components of this car's substructure. As cars are produced to meet the customer's specific requests, the vehicles are produced in sequence. One week before the body shop begins assembling the chassis, sister factories and suppliers from across Europe begin their production of individualized items, such as seats, running gear and bumpers, to meet each car's specification. As the chassis stands at a workstation, parts such as the doors are fitted. The doors are bolted to the chassis using torque wrenches. Next is the installation of the body's boot lid. Since the car's engine is located in the midsection, the cargo area is in the front. While attaching the boot lid, the mobility of its gas pressure springs are also inspected and certified to ensure the lid is a perfect fit and moves properly. Before the body panels meet the paint shop, any excess residue is removed using grinders, files and high-powered sanders to create perfectly uniform surfaces. The aluminium panels are then finely sanded by hand to prepare the finished surface for painting. For this car, the total production time in the paint shop is four days. Eleven optional colours are available. After 96 hours of construction and a five-stage paint process, the body is now ready to receive its running gear and V10 engine. The braking system on the Audi R8 is directly modelled on its racing version, allowing it to stop harder, faster and in shorter distances, whether on the road or track. First, a disc is set on a work table. Then the steering knuckle is added and locked into position. The knuckle will be attached to the suspension components. A smaller caliper, which is for the handbrake system, is positioned. Then bolting pins fitted and fastened using an automated wrench. Next is the installation of the hydraulic brake hose. Installation of the lower and upper suspension control arms, more commonly known as wishbones, is next. Using an impact driver, the narrow end of each wishbone is bolted to the steering knuckle. The control arms pivot on ball joints and help dampen the vehicle from road sharks. They also control the motion of the wheel throughout travel, controlling parameters such as the camber angle, toe pattern, roll centre height and more. A tie rod is then put into position. This is a structural unit that attaches on both ends of the steering rack, which aids in the pushing and pulling movement of the wheels.
added next are the monoblock aluminium brake caliper and its pins, which houses the brake pads and six pistons. Finally, a few more parts are fitted to the tie rods, including the bolt and socket arrangement with a tapered stud for the mount bracket. This will complete the assembly, so it's ready to join the rest of the running gear and the new chassis. Once the brake assembly is finished, a hoist takes it to another workstation. Coming from a sister plant in Hungary, this 257 kilogram 10 cylinder engine is moved to a workstation where it receives additional parts. This 5.2 litre engine generates 525 horsepower, giving the car a top speed of 317 kilometers per hour. During the addition of the further parts, the drive plate and its screws are added to the engine flywheel, a device used to store rotational energy. Each screw is fitted by hand, then tightened with a power drill. Before connecting the engine to the transmission shaft, the drive plate is scanned into a computer for the car's assembly records. Using other computer software, the screws are checked and verified that they're fitted correctly to the drive plate and with the right amount of torque. Once it's verified that the drive plate has been installed correctly, the double clutch transmission is fitted to the V10 engine. The two large running parts are joined together. Now it's ready to be installed into the R8 to become its beating heart. Today on How It's Made Dream Cars is Audi's R8 Coupe. It's made from more than 5,000 parts over a period of eight days and along 14 stations in the assembly hall, each with a strict cycle time of just 30 minutes. The rear of this sports car is the most complex part of the vehicle. The chassis sits on a transfer dolly, which is maneuvered into position to drop in the V10 mid-engine, the gearbox, the fuel tank, interior panels and other trim items. Cabling and piping are also fitted. Because this car uses a flat oil pan, it allows the engine to be installed lower moving the car's centre of gravity closer to the ground, resulting in better road handling. Next, the chassis along with the new engine and interior components is rotated to add more electrical wiring and piping to the running gear. As further parts are fitted, they're screwed in place manually during this process, 50 to 60 parts will be installed within 30 minutes. Using a specialized lifting device, the braking assembly unit fitted with carbon fiber reinforced ceramic brake discs is installed. The locking bolts are tightened, securing the unit into position. Next, the body and chassis are shuttled by a transfer hoist down the assembly line to station number nine, where key aesthetics and functional features will be added. The car's retractable roof is lowered into place. The folding roof is made of cloth, which has less weight than a hardtop and further reduces the car's centre of gravity. Once fitted into position, the crane releases the component.
At the same time as the bolts of the convertible roof cover are fastened, the car's LED rear lights are also attached. LEDs have a very long service life and illuminate 250 milliseconds faster than conventional bulbs. Also fitted at this point are the battery, dashboard and the front and rear bumpers. The rear bumper also conceals ultrasonic sensors that assist the visual and acoustic parking system. Finally, the engine cover is installed, which is set between the fully automatic roof cover and the retractable rear spoiler. Using a torque wrench, the cover is connected to the hinges before its gas pressure springs are attached. In another work area, a robot adds high strength adhesive to the edges of the windscreen. It's carried to the car using suction cups and lowered into position. Afterwards, the bottom cowl and body shell brackets will be installed to further contain the glass. Also fitted at this stage are the steering wheel and the steering column airbag, along with its electrical wiring. The car's interior can be made from Napa leather of lamb or sheepskin, as well as Alcantara, which resembles suede. In the car's convertible version, a special pigmentation prevents the seats from overheating in the sun. The leather bucket seats are fitted inside the cockpit using a seat installation lifter. The pneumatic arm makes it easier to insert any electrical wiring in and around the seating. With the aid of a lifting device, a 19-inch aluminium alloy wheel and tyre is placed onto the front wheel plate and bolted into position. At another workstation, self-tapping screws are used to attach six aluminium underlining body panels underneath the car. These panels add further bodywork rigidity they also generate more downforce at high speeds and give some protection to the running gear parts from the environment. Only 20 R8 cars are made daily and when they've been built, it's time for a series of stringent tests. The R8's V10 engine offers power, torque and fuel efficiency due to its direct fuel injection system. This was originally developed for the Le Mans 24-hour race cars. Named after the Audi Quattro, this factory was primarily built to produce high-performance sports cars. Inside on the assembly line, on a section known as the finish line, the final construction details are inspected where all electrical systems, lights and the power steering are checked. Also added are operational fluids, such as coolant, oil, transmission fluid and brake fluid. Next, the car is sent to endure some meticulous driving tests in and around the factory. The car now stands in a dynamometer roll booth which uses multiple drive rollers for roughly 10 minutes. The car is often driven at speeds of up to 160 kilometers an hour throughout this evaluation. Vehicles are driven while a computer conducts a series of operations simulating various driving conditions. The transmission, suspension, braking and not to mention the engine's horsepower and torque are all examined during the test. The testing also includes load simulation, such as uphill driving. But the testing doesn't end here. Outside, the car is driven on a series of tracks as part of a pre-delivery durability test. The special surface track is a low speed course with a variety of demanding road conditions. 
Test drivers check the transmission, steering, suspension and brakes, plus the overall ride and handling of the drive. The performance development test track evaluates new and prototype vehicles in a high-speed bowl with lane-changing areas, straights and bank corners. The car's top speed and performance with the roof down is also evaluated. Also, every car is driven at a high stress level and sound tests are completed to check for interior noise, noise vibration, wind noise and running gear noise. Beyond the factory test tracks, the manufacturer has a set of hill routes and city courses that progressively challenge the vehicle's performance and durability. Following the testing, the car returns to the factory for more manual quality assurance. After a high pressure wash, the sports car bodywork and paint is checked and verified. Next, the panels are buffed to remove any dirt, dust or liquid picked up during the test. After eight days, 14 workstations and with more than 5,000 parts, the R8 is finally ready to leave the factory for the open road. To ensure that it's delivered as it left the factory, a protective white new car wrapping is fitted over the vehicle. An outer film layer protects the car from water, while an inner fleece layer protects the paintwork from any scratches. Even with the protective wrapping, the car can still be driven to where it needs to go next. The R8 has been built using the knowledge the company has gained from 12 victories at Le Mans since the year 2000. And that motor racing heritage also influenced the design of the car. But the car's functionality was never compromised. It can change from a convertible to a coupe while traveling at 50 kilometers per hour. From one original company to the eventual merger of four at the start of the 1930s, the Audi R8 is the culmination of over 110 years of motor manufacture and 70 years of racing experience. Its big brother has lit up the track at Le Mans. Now it too can cruise the city streets and country lanes. A writer needs a space to turn over a new leaf on Animal Planets next in Treehouse Masters. Here on Discovery Next, the words are flowing fast especially between Beep and Holly in Texas Car Wars.